Hello, everybody, and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends, and let us do the good work for today. Uh, previously, we were doing broadcast, and as you witness, uh, YouTube suddenly stopped our broadcast. And uh, thank God everything is fixed. And uh, by the help of those who uh, send many, many complaints to YouTube, YouTube, they uh, reversed their decision. And absolutely, it was a false, uh, you know. Imagine it says they're a scam. I mean, what scam? Why? Amazing. But anyway, they, tr they try always to stop us and they cannot debate us, they cannot answer us, so they flag. But always, you know, uh, the truth will always win at the end. And we have tons of channels. Actually, the Muslims today, they helped me to finish a uh, 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 full uh, chapter uh, translation in the Quran. Because you see, like always, when I start uh, broadcasting, I mean, all day is busy. And I'm not finding really enough time to, to work in the uh, Quran translation. So when this happened, I said, you know what? Who care? Let us go and finish one more verse or chapter in the Quran. And I finished the whole chapter translation today. So it was a good accomplishment. Uh, like, uh, accomplishment. So thanks for everybody for your support, for standing with us. And uh, remember, they flag us for a reason because we are doing a very uh, you know, important jobs. They cannot refute us. They cannot uh, answer us. So um, this is the only solution. But it's not it's going to work. <clears throat> I mean, what a big deal! That's why I told you to subscribe to the other channels because you never know. I mean, uh, you know. Uh, but the solution is very easy. Just a new channel, subscribers, people come. You know how to find me very easy, and you can share with everybody. Um, they try to put stress on us, and for me, uh, nothing can really. Uh, you know, like I went through a lot of uh, things in my life, and this is the last thing to be called a stress for me. I went through war. I want. I mean, this is this is like a kids playing games. So if you think that this would be a stress, that would be funny. Now today we have a topic. Uh, No problem. So you can, they can do that. So what? Let them do that. And we can, you know, we, you know, we, you know, for us, we can get it back. Here we go. You know, people they start complaining, send emails to to your YouTube, and we get it back in a few hours. So what? Let them play. And as I said, like each each time they try uh, to do something, it works for our benefit. Trust me. Here we go. I finish one chapter. Like if. Uh, if this was for like a few days, then I will finish many chapters. So actually, it was not really good for me because uh, uh, YouTube is kind of tempting to go and speak to people and to, to teach. Uh, but I like to finish the, the Quran translation. People are waiting for it. And me, myself, I want to finish it too. So actually, me, myself, I'm thinking to take some time where I do no broadcast, nothing except finishing this translation. Like it's because it's one time deal, you know, it's not like something you work in it every day. It's a book you translate and that's it. That's will be forever. So I'm going to finish this because you never know, you know. Uh, we might live for tomorrow, we might live for today, we might live for years to come. So I want to finish this thing. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's uh, it's important, you know, the false translation is all over and People don't speak Arabic, and they try to fool us. And you know, remember, translating a book about religion is not just translating the book. It's about knowing the religion very well, because knowing the language, not necessarily will give the meaning. You, you know what I mean? Because you need to know what this text is saying. So uh, even if somebody study Arabic, or let us say, uh, most of the translation actually is done by non-Arabic, which is funny, like Shakir, Yusuf Ali, uh, Biktal, I mean, none of those are, are Arab. So how, how somebody is not an Arab even translating the Quran? It's it's weird. And this is why the translation sounds, sometimes it feels like as if it's a software translation. Um, anyway, our, we, we, we always continue doing what we do. And we have our other channels where always you can find me. I will update you in Patreon or Minds or etc. In case something happened, you know always how to find me. And thank you, I guess, for those who support us. I really appreciate you. 
I saw how many comments how many people were upset and even many many people send right away complaint to YouTube I think this is the best way to do it when they do something like this to me I think the best way is you know because we have subscribers by by tens of thousands it's not like my channel is not really small one so uh, if everybody uh, send an email I mean you can imagine how big the impact can be however the Lord is on our side and if the Lord is with me who could be against me I never worry about anything tomorrow is good for tomorrow belong to the Lord now today we have a funny topic which is about uh, where uh, as you see I have a picture of India now for sure I I love Indian people this is have nothing to do with Indian so don't take me wrong I love all kind of people and actually I love poor people very much I believe that the poor of us is the best of us wherever I go I find always poor people are very receiving very uh, for sure there's bad people everywhere you know but poor people generally speaking they are really generous and I will explain it to you like you go to a poor person who have nothing I mean almost his uh, his house almost if you if you if you uh, if you throw a ball in it is going to collapse and then he provide you with everything he have they are very beautiful people so today our topic is about some stupidity uh, we learn always from legions like you know there is there is a stories we uh, we we uh, witness in our day or daily life as an example how many of you believe in the omen how many of you believe that somebody can do magic to somebody uh, like I went to some countries even Christian countries and I noticed that there is many places where people believe that somebody can put a spell on you or somebody can uh, uh, you know control you by writing some words or you know so uh, you know but people believe and I believe always those things can happen because of the lack of education not the lack of intelligence you know all of us maybe me if I am born uh, in a family who nobody is educated I never been to school I never have opportunity to read books and to not only to read actually you know I was reading when I was a kid if you if you see how many books I have I am not even 10 years old I have like hundreds in the age of 10 uh, I remember once my dad he says this book will who is who's the one reading this book there's a book it's called a jahiz a jahiz is a very complicated book you can ask any person who is very much educated in the Middle East he's a very amazing uh, uh, writer and this is not a book for a child and it's not even a book for an adult this is a book for somebody he is really really like educated so I said uh, this is mine so he started laughing <laughs> <laughs> he said you could not find better than this for you <laughs> anyway so education is important and you know you you feed you feed your brain since an early age this is the best way to have uh, uh, your child to be in the future to be someone who uh, wherever he go he he knows whatever you ask him about he you know he don't uh, speak rubbish and speak foolishness now for sure we will still be ignorant it doesn't matter how much we learn but our ignorance will be let us say less and less and less which means we are killing ignorance by learning but uh, uh, but still we are ignorant in somehow somewhere like you know in English my it's not my first language so you will be ignorant but this is normal I mean this is we are a human being and we will be always ignorant in something so today we will learn about how the Muslims explain perfume you see there is in Islamic books all of it actually is a collection of stories if we go to the Quran, the collection of stories, as an example, the story of Jesus. Where Muhammad he got the story of Jesus? He collected from stories around him. He never saw Jesus. He don't speak Hebrew. Uh, he, according to Muslim, he cannot read and write. And so, where, where he get the story from? People around him. Uh, stories about Moses. Stories about uh, Solomon. Like uh, as an example, uh, uh, there is a chapter eighteen in the Quran speaking about Solomon having flying carpet. Uh, he spoke to a bird he heard the ant the ant make him laugh all those stories you will find them in book it's, it's called the legion of the Jews I advise you actually it's in the internet it's for free because it's more than a hundred year old uh, those legion of the Jews and other legions are collection of story which is making Islam Islam is made of legions and today our story is no different so if we go to uh, uh, 
if we go to the story today we are going to read let us open one of the Islamic source okay <clears throat> hey, don't tell me it's not going to open now <laughs> that would be funny okay let's see You see, I, uh, me myself, I don't save, uh, I don't save reference. Uh, so what I do usually, you know, I just um, I memorize it, and then I find it in the spot. So I like today. I decide to talk about this topic. Okay. All right. This, this is the first one. Let us see one. This is the book, it's called Al-Kafi, and this is a Shia book, just take your attention, but this is equal to Sahih al-Bukhari for the Muslim Sunni. So this is Shia. <clears throat> I, I hope the, the sound of the laundry machine is not annoying. I have a very old, old, old machine from the cave time. <laughs> so when it does laundry, it make noise like if it's a, like, a, like a truck. So I hope it's not annoying. Is the sound coming? Do you hear anything? I hope not. Thank you, guys. Thank you for the kind words. Thank you for all those who make donation. Uh, read with me here carefully. Actually, sorry, the, the one who speak Arabic he can read, and we will use Google translation for for. Uh, but first, let us read in Arabic. We translate, and then we will use Google translation. Here it says, "The origin of the perfume, the origin of the perfume. Where the perfume is coming from." So the Muslims are trying to think like, okay, we have perfume, but where is the perfumes coming from? This nice smell. So what the story here is saying that you remember Eve, she was sent from heaven, right? So she was in heaven and with her husband, Mr. Adam. So because she was in heaven, in her hair, there was a smell of heaven. So when Allah, he sent her, he sent her down to the earth. And Eve, she used to comb her hair, and here it says, "From Musa ibn Bakr, from 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 from." He says, "When Adam was sent down from heaven, he was sent down over a safa." Remember, we will talk about. We spoke about a safa and marwa. A safa and marwa. It was two places where two little tiny hills, or like mountains. Uh, we actually, not, they are not mountains. Like they are a hill. One have a statues for a Safa and one have a statues for Al Marwa, male and female. So here the story saying that when Allah He sent Adam and Eve, one of them was sent on a Safa, which is Adam, and uh, Eve was standing in the Marwa, and then she did comb her hair by a perfume from the perfume of heaven. And when she was coming down to the ground, uh, she said, what is the benefit of this comp, which I don't, I'm, I'm cursed by, by Allah. So she threw it away. She opened the, the comp, it's like, you know, like a, it's like a brush. She opened it, and then all the feather of this comp or whatever it's made it from, fly. And then it kept flying, flying, flying until it arrived to India. And this is why the Indian perfume is very famous. Here you notice, the Muslim, by the way, they believe in this. This is not a joke for them. Maybe it's for you. It's funny. It's stupid, etc. But the Muslim believe in this seriously. And especially we're talking about the Shia now. But the Sunni, they have same, same similar stories. So 
because uh, uh, Eve she combed her hair and her hair was uh, Allah he gave her a comb or in the heaven she have a comb coming from made in the heaven who made it we do not know that comb it has, smells so good now the Arab they want to explain why the Indian they used to sell perfume obviously at that time the only one the Arab they are getting their perfume from India spice and perfume etc from India so they want to explain why the Indian they have perfume where is the perfume came this nice smell is coming from where what is the source of it so they come to a solution that when Eve she was sent down to earth Allah oh sorry uh, uh, she have a camp for her the one she camp her hair with it and this is made from heaven and when she arrived to the earth she said to herself why I need this uh, Allah he cursed me she throw it away and she opened it like whatever it's made from uh, uh, the brush and all the feather of the brush or whatever the, the container of the brush fly all the way to India and this is how we explain uh, having perfume in this earth now I'm going to use Google translation uh, let us see Google translation all right this is Google translation so you will see here the story that uh, when Adam and Eve as you see now Google translation is not really too much accurate uh, but you will see it says when the Prophet uh, Adam was sent down uh, came down from paradise on a Safa and Al Marwa uh, they bring they brought with them the perfume of paradise from the paradise and then uh, Eve she said to herself why I need this comp what for so so she uh, opened it and she scattered the, the the feather in the or whatever is inside the comp and then the wind carry all those things all the way to India and this is therefore the frequency become Indian or the yeah the fra the fragrance became Indian as you see now this is Google translation for sure it's funny and it's not too much accurate but it, it give you an idea this is what what we are saying here is not uh, fabrication right now here you notice you ask yourself when the Muslims for centuries they are reading those stories and they believe in them if there is one person really he did not believe absolutely there is a lot of Arab who refuse those stories but in in a, in a in a land where nobody dare to say this is a lie who dare Islam sustain itself by the sword and by killing anyone who reject so who dare to say this is stupid nobody even now like even if you have a PhD now and you live in the Middle East actually even if you live in the West uh, a Muslim how many Muslim they dare to say this is stupid all right people they are going to the moon people they are planning to go to Mars and those people they are still thinking that this is how the we have the perfume tons of stories you cannot find any reason for them to believe except a human being he chose to be stupid what about Allah he sent down Adam and Eve as two chickens I don't know I think men anyone heard of that before I just remember it anyone heard of Adam and Eve sent down as a chicken before do we have any Muslim here do we have any Muslim guys this kid just ignore the kid if somebody is a kid we will ban him actually we don't want the kid to be involved in chat with adults. It's not even safe for you to be here. Do we have any Muslim? Yeah, Adam and Eve, they were sent down by Allah as a chicken. And actually, let me let me try to find. <clears throat> but if there is any Muslim here, please let me know so you can call us and we can have uh, some good conversation together. Uh, let us close this one uh, 
and let me look for the other one. I hope I will find it. You know, always the Muslims, they try to present their religion as something fantastic and amazing and science and etc. But the fact, uh, what Muslim books contain is beyond, you know, fantasy. Fantasy is nothing. All of Islam is based on fantasy. Like you go to heaven, you have virgins waiting for you, river of wine, a river of milk, a river. Everything is river. Even honey is river. And actually, it's funny that honey, in order to make it a uh, running river, the heaven have to be really hot. I mean, it's honey. If it is really, it's cool, it's not hot, the honey will not be moving, will be like, uh, I know, I describe it, it's going to be like a glue. It's not going to run like a river. But anyway, it's a fantasy. Now, let us see here, let me search <clears throat> for the reference. Okay, let's see this one. No, not this one. Okay. Okay, I think this one will do. All right. All right, this one. This is the book of Biharul Anwar. Biharul Anwar is equal to Al Bukhari 2 for the Shia. Volume number 11, page number 207. And here we see the following. Uh, <clears throat> where is, uh, where is uh, Allahu Akbar is coming from? Where is Allahu Akbar coming from? The Muslim trying to find where Allah Akbar. Who is the first one who said Allah Akbar? Hmm? Okay. If we go actually to the page before it, uh, this is 207. Let us go to page 206. All right. Okay, let's see. Hmm. I mean, the stories here are very interesting, but I don't know if I'm gonna read all this for you. Uh, it's it's a, it's a crazy story too. Like uh, you know, Allah He taught Adam, uh, taught uh, the angel to take care of Adam and to be in charge, and then. Uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, Allah, he told uh, the angel to enslave all the creatures he have. And every th every year he gave a report or let's say, and he teach them what Allah, he wanted to, to do, want them to do, to do. And then, uh, and then Allah, he made this angel with Adam to remember the the orders of Allah. Uh, and you know he remind him about it every year and then when one day Adam he decided to disobey Allah so Allah he took him out of heaven and he made him forget the teaching of Allah and the constitution of Allah or let us say uh, the deal with Allah which Allah he put on him and in his son Muhammad so Muhammad is a son of Adam uh, which is his inheritance. Muhammad is the inheritance of Muhammad. And then he made him, uh, Allah, he made Adam kind of a fool, and he is confused. But when Adam, he decided to, to, to repent to Allah, uh, Allah, he made the image of the angel into a white pearl. And then this white pearl, he threw it from the heaven to Adam. And Adam was in India. Adam was in India. And here you notice why we always say that there's a strong connection between Hinduism and Islam. And by the way, 
the the pearl we are talking about this is the black stone later you will see that the black stone was white like milk and then the sin of mankind made it black so uh, uh this the the pearl the white it was an angel and after allah uh, after uh, uh, adam he repented to allah allah he thrown he made this angel uh, uh, like a rock white rock but like pearl and he threw it from the heaven and this rock fell down in the land of India and when uh, when Adam he saw uh, this uh, uh, this uh, stone he he, he liked it like he loved it and uh, uh, for him it wasn't nothing but uh, but like a price uh, like a, a like a diamond or like let's say a jewelry and then Allah he made this stone talk and then the stone says to Adam don't you know me like didn't you recognize me Adam he says mm, yeah uh, no uh, yeah uh, uh, uh. so he says he said to him you you do not remember me well the shaitan he made you forget about remembering your Lord and then uh, this stone changed its look to the image which Adam he used to know in the heaven and then he says to Adam where is the where is the like the agreement between you Allah you know what Allah gave to you as an agreement what is it where is it what you did with it and then Adam he jumped on him and he memorized or he let's say recite the condition of Allah to him and he started crying and then he bowed down to him or let us say he obey him and then he kissed him and he uh, uh, bridge again to follow the condition of Allah and then Allah he uh, 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 he made uh, the inner or let us say the nature of the stone the white stone which is from pearl to be uh, so uh, transparent and it was like light like light and then Adam he carried it in his back because he is respecting it and uh, praising it and then if uh, he got too tired from carrying it carrying carrying this stone Jibreel will carry it with him like will carry it like okay give me give me like I will give you a break uh, give me the stone until he was able to bring it all the way to Mecca and they keep doing that until they arrive to Mecca and then every day they pledge to Allah every day and every morning every night and then when Allah uh, 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 sent Jibreel down to his land which means to the to Mecca and he built the Kaaba uh, he landed down in that place which is in between the Rukun and al -Bab. there is a place like in the Kaaba you know uh, bet between the do the uh, the corner of Yemen where we told you before about the stones from Yemen and the door of the Kaaba and in that place uh, Adam he saw a vision or he saw something he like he saw the vision when he took the the, the agreement with Allah and then in this place the angel uh, uh, you know he taught him the condition of Allah again so now they are explaining why uh, the Yemeni corner is located in that place all of this to explain this and then uh, Allah he set away Adam from the Kaaba to a Safa and then he set Hawa to Al Marwa and he made the rock or sorry the, the, that rock is a, a corner and then he says Allahu Akbar so all this story to say to tell us why and who is the one who first said Allahu Akbar do you see it do we have any Muslim here want to say something all this story all this mad story to tell us who is the first one to say Allahu Akbar it was Adam so Allah, he sent him down to the earth with Adam, Adam uh, to As-Safa, Hawa to Al-Marwa. And then, by the way, if you notice, if you go in the Quran, you will find in the Quran, it says that 
uh, when when the Muslims refuse to uh, uh, to practice the ritual of Asafa al Marwa, which is the ritual of the pagans. So Allah He made the verse saying supposedly, which is Muhammad Aka Muhammad, you should know that as Safa and Al Marwa is from ritual of Allah. Chapter 2, verse number 158. If you go and read the tafsir for this or the book, it's called Asbab al Nuzul, which means the reason for the verses to come down. It says, Behold, as Safa and the Marwa are among the symbols of Allah. By the way, it's not among the symbol of Allah, among the ritual of Allah. And then, so if those who visit the house in the season or other 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 time should go around them circle around them there is no sin in that here you notice it says there is no sin in that do you know why it says no sin because the Muslims refuse in the beginning to practice the pagan practice Muhammad he keeps saying I am not I, I'm against the pagan I'm not going to follow the pagan and then he took the Kaaba and then he forced them to do a Safa and then he forced them to do Al Marwa but yet he claimed that he is not a pagan but this is the ritual of the pagan where they used to have a statues of a man in the top of a Safa and a statues of a woman in the top of the Marwa. And those are statues which are naked. Why? There are some stories that say that there was a guy, a man and a woman. They have sex inside the Kaaba. And Allah, he cursed them and he made them in a Safa and Marwa. This is one of the stories. But the story here today we have is different. As you see, a Safa and Marwa, this is what Allah, he made because he sent Adam in a Safa and he sent Hawa in al Marwa. And this is why the Muslims have to go between them to visit Adam and to visit Hawa or Eve. Adam, Hawa is the word Eve in English. So, yeah, we would talk about the construction of the Kaaba, but let us focus on the topic, please. You see, the, the, the if you have my book, you will see that uh, the angels supposedly they build the Kaaba. And then uh, uh, Adam, he traveled from Sri Lanka, from all the way to in, from India, all the way to uh, Mecca. And then when he was in his way to enter Mecca, there was thousands of angels, forty thousand angels, uh, uh, praising him for coming uh, to uh, uh, to Mecca. And uh, they told him, "You are late. We are doing. We are. We are going around the Kaaba for uh, forty years before you." And according to the story, Adam himself he did Hajj forty times only. So imagine how silly it is. I mean, you go all the way from India, you come all the way to uh, to the Kaaba. I mean, why you don't live there? Secondly, how a person who lives in Sri Lanka can come to Saudi Arabia? If I go now, let us open the map. If you open the map of Sri Lanka, you will find that Sri Lanka is literally an island. Okay, how Adam he came from Sri Lanka to Mecca. And remember, at that time, I mean, this is the, this is one one guy deal. It's not like they have a uh, they don't know how to make a ship. We are talking about a person. He is coming naked to Earth, totally, literally naked. You know. So what, uh, how this guy, he came from Sri Lanka. That's why the Muslims now are fighting with the Buddhas over a place which is like a hill, and they claim this is the foot of Adam. There's a big foot, huge one, uh, like in the shape of a foot, and they they claim that this is the foot of Adam. The Buddhas, they, be, they believe this is the foot, the foot of Buddha. You know, everyone with his madness. Uh, so uh, uh, Allah, he sent Adam all the way to Sri Lanka, and then he went all the way uh, from Sri Lanka uh, to Mecca. But how, I mean, this is, the strip is really stupid. I mean, what is that? How this guy can go to Mecca? Look where he will go. How he will go. In order to go, in order to go to Mecca, and this is how it is. Let us uh, make it more, uh, 
this guy he have to swim literally swim not go by a ship we are talking about the first man in history he have to go and swim through the ocean from Sri Lanka to the mainland in India and then he go through Pakistan right now and then he go through Persia and then he go to Iraq and then he go around and come back to Saudi Arabia and then he go back to he go to Mecca okay all of this to go and visit a stone why you don't store the stones someplace else and why Allah he sent Adam in Sri Lanka I mean is that a wrong parachute and if you notice we just read a story before it just the one before it about the perfume where it says that uh, Adam and Eve they landed in a Safa al Marwa. so uh, every story giving you a different story this is what Islam is about all right but this is showing us the influence of India over Islam obviously it's a huge influence how many different places did Allah send Adam to yeah as I'm saying that it's a uh, uh, this contradiction every story is telling us a different story this is Islam my friend we'll come to Islam what we can take you know <laughs> but by the way Sunni and Shia agree that Allah he landed Adam in Sri Lanka so Shia and Sunni they agree that Allah he put him in Sri Lanka and here you ask yourself what is the roots why the Arab why uh, Muhammad why the Muslims have such a belief I mean why India what the point and actually there is a story where it says that Adam was sent down to Sri Lanka here while uh, Eve she landed down in Yemen and here you ask yourself how they met I mean <laughs> where they met in Facebook I mean, I am. I landed in Sri Lanka. She landed in Yemen. Oh, okay. And how they met again? So Islamic stories is beyond stupidity. You know, it's like really crazy stories. But if you are a person who follow blindly, I mean, all the stories are accepted. Just don't use your brain, right? Uh, maybe, uh, maybe if she make a page in Facebook at that time, or she have WhatsApp or Viber, or you never know. Uh, but uh, things happen. Things happen. Uh, so, uh, uh, by the way, if you notice, not a single Muslim he can say to us, "You are lying." You know, not a single Muslim can say what you just said to us is a lie, is a fabrication. There is no such a thing. You see, we, because we always show the book number, the book name, the page number. Um, they cannot, they cannot say this guy is fabricating stories. They cannot. So, why, why I want to be a Muslim? Believe in a religion based on fairy tale stories. Like you know, when a Muslim he says to you, "We believe in one God." Okay, but your God, look what your God. But look the stories about your God. So okay, you believe in one God. Okay, is, so he think that because he say I believe in one God, that's mean he have the truth in his side. Well, it doesn't matter how many God you believe in. Let us say there is somebody he believe in a thousand God. Still, if he if his thousand God are exist, it's mean he have a true belief. <laughs> Correct? It's not about how many they are. It's about if they are true or false. How many will not change anything? You can believe in one. You can believe in a half God, a quarter God. <laughs> so, so you know we cannot. We cannot uh, say okay because I, because this person may believe on God. And obviously, he has a true religion. There is many religions who believe in one God. There is a church. It's called the Church of Satan. They worship Satan, and Satan is one God for them. Now, uh, do we have any Muslim? He have any uh, anything to say? Muhammad Qasim saying Islam is true. Okay, Muhammad Qasim, why Islam is true? 
What is the reason making you say Islam is true? Give me a reason. That's it, Islam is true. So all those stupid stories are true. All those crazy stories are uh, true. Are true. Islam is true. That's it. He he gave you the answer. That's it. What do you want more? <clears throat> All right. Read with me, Mister and Mister True. The least of people are paradise in the position that one would have eighty thousand servant. Okay. What is it true about that? I mean, what is the logic here? I'm trying to learn from you. Hmm? Any Muslim? Islam is true. Look at this. If Islam is true, what kind of God he says such a thing? Is that from God or this is from a crazy person? 80,000 little boys. Those 80,000, they are not even men. They are little boys as the Quran described them. They are little youth and they are very white like pearls. Islam is true. Your bedroom is going to be a tent. I am in heaven and still I'm a tent. Yeah, because the one who made Islam is, an, is a Bedouin man. Still he's speaking about tents. So it's going to be a tent, but it's made from pearl. Now, the distance of this uh, tent is the same distance as between Damascus and Sana'a. Sana'a and Yemen. More than 1,200 miles. I don't know. Convert that to a kilometer. This is the bedroom. <laughs> so, when, you know, and the... Uh, the ground of your room is made from zabarjad pearls, uh, 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 expensive stones. I mean, we're talking about heaven with stones. What what is the value of expensive stones in heaven? And if your wife is inside this room, how you can go between them? I mean, it's going to take you two years to go. Just uh, like uh, there's a camel in the heaven. Any Muslim? So we can say, we can say as we wish, you know, we can claim as we claim, but the reality is different. This is going to be true. But obviously, there's an extreme promise here, and the same promise does not even fit with, with any kind of logic. God, he created Adam and Eve. He did not create for them 80,000 little boys to serve them. And what the point? If in the heaven your food will be ready by wishing it, your body will be huge. That will make it even more stupid. Because why Allah will increase your size of your body? Size is relative. Are you going to fight there with the ants or what? Guys, our body will be huge. As long as you are talking about the body is huge. Is it true that Adam was 30, 30 meter tall? What happened? Hmm? 60 arms. I don't know. Uh, Convert 60 arms. 60 arms, actually, no, not 30 meter. 60 arms will be, every arm is like 90 centimeter, I think. So what happened? He was a dinosaur. This is why you will see the Muslims, they have images of uh, Adam a grave, which is a fabricated uh, image. I mean, what? Grave, they have a grave of Noah too. 
Muslims have everything. If we go and search in Google, Prophet Adam grave, you will see what I'm talking about. Let us find it. Look at this. Guys, this is this is the grave of Adam. Take a look. <laughs> they have there is a grave, they know where he was, and they I mean Muslims. Look, you open the grave for us. We want to see the guy who is like this this long room. Hmm? Open the grave, we want to see the guy inside. What do you mean no screen? No, the screen is on. Maybe you need to refresh your page. <clears throat> yeah, this is what they're saying. This is the grave of Adam. And uh, it might be fake. All of Islam is fake. Now you now you figure it out this is fake? Oh, who have the grave of Adam? Where, how, how come? Huh? <laughs> the grave of Adam. And the grave of Adam, you will find it in, in Pakistan. He immigrated to Pakistan, you know. He was visiting Shabir Ali and he died there, or uh, uh, Zakir Naik. They have many of them. It's not only one. They have tons of a grave like this for Adam. Every country have a grave of Adam, trust me. There's one in Yemen. There's one in, 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 uh, 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 in Iraq. There's one in uh, uh, Persia. There's uh, they're, they're all over. They have the grave of Noah too. They have all the graves. Let me find you the grave of Noah. Hold on. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Yeah, look at this one. This is the grave of Noah. This is one of the grave of Noah. There's many of them. Look how long it is. But you will notice Noah is shorter than his father. We have to be honest here. Hmm. The Quran spoke about a guy. His name is Saleh. Look how big the grave of Saleh. All the prophet was it was a huge. All of them they were huge. Look how big. This is the grave of Saleh. His head in China, his feet in in in, in Cyprus. Hmm. What else? This is a grave of who? Ah, see, this is a different grave for Adam. This is a different one. Hmm. Okay, let us see something else. Two hundred ten foot long, largest grave in the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy <laughs> and you know uh, uh, Qasim he will say to you the, the, the poor Qasim he will say to you Islam is true uh, they should had been wide too so it doesn't make sense yeah as, as the rest of the story makes sense Muhammad well your prophet is the one who says that does it make sense for you does it make sense that in the heaven Adam will be 90 miles tall and Eve will be 30? Does it make sense that your private part will be endless? I mean, how you can carry it? And how you can walk with it? And now you are talking about making sense? That's weird. What makes sense in Islam? Why you don't call me Qasim and tell me what makes sense in Islam? Do you like to call me and tell me what makes sense in Islam? Whatever the Prophet he says is truth. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is the logic. Guys, whatever the Prophet says is true. Uh, this is who? Who is this Prophet? Uh, hold on. 
Prophet Daniel. Look, look, even the Prophet Daniel is in, is in Uzbekistan. Prophet Daniel, Daniel, you know. <laughs> even, you know, they, they took even names from the Old Testament and they put them in, in Uzbekistan. Here we go. Look how big he is. Look how big he is. This is Prophet Daniel. By the way, this is why, you know, we, we coming from the east, like always I open the door. I don't see the, the, the guy who is knocking the door. I don't see him because he's not even to my knee. You know, we are huge. Yeah. This is Daniel. This is Prophet Daniel. Okay. What you can say? True story. Who is this guy? Yeah. This is Daniel too. Welcome. Who is this guy? Look. This is other grave for Noah. Look how many grave they have for Noah. And look like the, the grave is not straight because it's so long. <laughs> and they cover him with blankets. Anyway, you know. Uh, look, this is another grave for Noah. Look how many grave for Noah there is. This is a different one. Look, this is a different grave for Noah. Different location, different place. So, you know, uh, welcome to Islam. What you can say? Who is this guy here? Uh, this is this is Job. Guys, this is a prophet Job. <laughs> what happened to Job? Why he's so small? But even Job, he even Job, he's, he looked like he's maybe uh, three meters tall. You see this like three meter and a half? This is a prophet Job. Muslims, they have everything. Any prophet you want, which prophet you want, anything, anything. I'm just like, clicking at pictures, by the way. I'm, I mean, like this is what? Prophet who? Yeah, this is Job. Okay, this is Job too. Unbelievable. This is Shu'aib. Like, why Shu'aib is a small? This is Prophet Shu'aib. Look how small he is. He's tiny. He's small. And I, you know, you Muslims have a lot of stories. Must be true. Who is this guy? This is. It says Lebanon. This is the grave of who? Uh, Prophet Joshua. Look how look how tall Joshua is. Unbelievable. Look at Joshua. She. He's like a fifteen meter. See, human being is getting uh, smaller, smaller, smaller. So Prophet just Joshua. Uh, it says Prophet Joshua tomb. The Muslims have older prophet. Man, man. I mean, the Jews don't have them. The Muslims have them. Joshua, Daniel, Job, you name it. What about Moses? Let me search for Moses. I did not see Moses. I'm, I'm worried about Moses now. What happened to Moses? What happened to Moses? Don't tell me Moses don't have a grave in the, for the. Uh, let us. Uh, I, I will search for Musa grave. Hold on. Just give me a second. Uh, I will really be upset if there is no Moses. I mean, come on, that's not even right. This is Prophet. Who is this guy? Who who is this guy, guys? Read the name for me. Read the name. What is the name? Elisa. Prophet Elisa. Who's what do you mean? Who's that? <laughs> but until now, I did not see Musa grave. Where is Musa grave? No, no, there is Musa grave. I heard many play, you know, before many places, Musa grave, but I cannot find. Uh, uh, look, look at this. This is the grandfather of Jesus, Omron. Omron, look, Omron. Look how tall he is. This is me and Jesus. Must be was uh, Isa. Must be like uh, fifty meter tall. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, they have they have graves for. Everybody, I mean, you cannot escape Muslims' graves. That's it. 
they will make a grave for you. You like it, you don't like it. I cannot uh, let us I will search in Arabic for uh, the grave of Musa's. Uh, I'm typing in English. Okay, switch. Okay, here we go. Uh, no, this one, this one. This is this who? Who is this prophet? Hold on, I want to see who is this prophet. Uh, ah, this is yeah. This is the this is the grave of Moses. Here we go. We found it. What do you want more? Here, this is Moses' grave, brother. What do you want more? All right. Are we happy? This is the grave of Abel, the son of Adam. You know, Ad, uh, Abel, Abel, Abel. This is uh, this Cain and Abel. This is this, uh, the uh, the the grave of Abel. I'm gonna tell you, they have all the graves. Nothing is missing. Moses, they have them. Adam, they have them. Noah, they have them. So Allah, you know, look, the Muslim do Arabic to preserve all the graves, but they don't have their books. Hmm. Yeah, in Arabic we call him Qabil Wahhabil. I mean, Islam, Islam, my friend, the only religion can preserve anything. Yeah, this is the grave of Musa's. But I don't know why Musa is not so at all. Like he's he looked like maybe twelve meters, thirteen meters, something like that. He's tall, but still shorter than me. Yeah, Cain and Abel. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I mean, what do you want more? They have all the graves. Any any grave you want, they, they have it. Welcome. Those are the steps of who? Any Muslim can help? You might find Jesus tomb soon <laughs> now we have it already <laughs> okay is there a grave for the father of the Arab Ishmael first of all Ishmael is not the father of the Arab this is as general information we hear it always even in the Christian churches when a Christian minister he says to you that the father of the Arab is Ishmael ask him where do you get this from my friend Please correct your information. Ishmael have nothing to do with the Arab. If you have my book, uh, the first one, Deception of Allah, you will find even in Muslim books, they agree that according to them, Ishmael, he learned Arabic at the age of 13. So imagine I go to China, I learn Arabic at the age of 13 from the Chinese, and then I am the father of the Chinese. Are you getting my point? So even those who say Muhammad is from Ishmael is a joke because in order to be from Ishmael, you cannot be an Arab. Oh, okay, being a test. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, but you know because uh, this is uh, always something we hear from Christians that uh, the, uh, the Arab, the Muslims are from Ishmael. First of all, the, the, the majority of the Muslims are not Arab. Secondly, the Arab is not an ethnic group. Like I am an Arab, but we are not one ethnic group. You know, this is why we look different. You will see some Arab, they are really, really white. There is some they are a little bit darker, a little bit darker. And you will find some Arab, they have a, a, a the real, uh, let us say, the real ones who used to live in the desert of the Arab uh, are mixed of many ethnic the desert is open whoever go live in the desert as a bedouin to grow uh, uh, to make it simple for you if abraham live in the desert he's an arab you know what i mean so arab is an aramaic word mean desert it's not a name of a nation 
do we understand the word Aram is a word mean hills so the Aramaic are people who Aram was given a name which have a meaning him and his people after him they live in hills high high ground and it's not a desert uh, Arab is a name given to a land which is a desert so whoever who, whoever live in the desert they call him Arabian so if the Aramaic are exist today in USA if you live in Arizona they will call you Arab especially if you are a person who live in a tent desert and tent you are an Arab so Arab actually usually it means two things at the same time that you are a Bedouin uh, you don't have a fixed place to live in you know a tent and at the same time it was like when you say barbarian at that time like people who they are savage they don't take shower but this is normal I mean if you are a better one what you would do what shower they don't even have water so they smell bad well it's normal because they live in the desert you know for me when I was a teenage we used to go for hunting uh, we stay in the in the desert for 15 days and by the end of 15 days and we are just going there for fun you come back and you smell like really bad I don't want to use the word you know uh, because you sweat and there's no water what water we have water with us which is uh, you know for drinking and we have to be careful about even and if we find water even that water mostly is not really that good to drink from it if you try to work to work you know like wash so people who live in the desert they have a tough life this is why when the Arab attacked the Roman the Arab they were uh, they are savage and they can win a war better than somebody who is uh, spoiled like now if you have a person who is a farmer and you have a person who work in an office and you tell them okay let's fight who is the one who will win you, you know the answer the guy who uses his muscles all day long so a Bedouin who will spend his day in the top of the camel or the horse in the sun uh, between his animals, he is a tough person. And even Ibn Khaldun, which is not an Islamic philosopher, Muslims accuse him to be an atheist, uh, he said that the stage of a state of, of the Muslims is a three stages. The first one is the most strong one. It, it is the stage of being savage, a Bedouin savage. Then the second stage is when they are in the middle between Bedouin and civilian. And here they are weaker. And then he says the last stage when Islam, uh, the caliphate destroyed, when the Muslim became comfortable and wealthy. And then they are not able to win a war. So to be savage, it was the key point to win a war. This is why Muhammad, he says to you in the hadith here, I've been victorious by terror. What, why he was victorious by terror because his soldiers are savage and like like ISIS now ISIS you know when a little town here that ISIS is coming people will be terrified those are criminals so I was victorious by terror why what, where the terror is coming from because you have an army of savage you understand And actually, until now, Western, Western, they cannot win a war with anyone because they are not being savage. You see, war, uh, the point of a war is to be savage. I mean, look at the Western countries these days. They want to go for war, but they are talking about a human right. I mean, how that work? You are going to kill. So what a human right? So, oh, uh, we are sorry. Uh, we bomb a uh, village and there is some civilian. You are on war. So they would never win a war. But if the Afghani Taliban, they have nukes, they will be happy to dump their nukes on USA. <laughs> the savage would win. So, you know, even now, if you are not really savage, you will not win a war. Because war is about killing. It's not about uh, giving hugs. So if you are worried about hurting the fear of the enemy, well, you will never win. And this is why, you know, like uh, they went to Iraq, but they don't, they are not going really for war in Iraq. They want to establish a new country, you know, but that would not work. 
Same as what happened in Afghanistan. They are there for 20 years. They will never win a war there as long as you are not savage. You know? So when you fight with a savage, you have to be savage. Otherwise, you will never lose. You will never win. So he can do whatever he want. He want to you, and you cannot do anything to him. And this is the this is this is usually. So why you go in war with those people? And here, by the way, I'm not taking a favor of any to be savage or not. I'm just stating a fact about who can win a war. You know. Uh, but what about the cells and both European are savage? I don't know what you mean by sales silts. I'm not sure what you mean. Like as if we go in the in the previous uh, history of Europe, all of us we heard about the Viking, right? Any one of you here from uh, from Norway and those countries? The Viking, they were very scary. Why? Because they are savage. As simple as that. The more savage you are, the more you win. Especially, we are talking about, you know, time uh, where uh, uh, you know uh, it's a fight by sword. It's not a fight by uh, technology and being, you know, it's about being savage. Savagery bring you bring you victory at that time. You see, when when uh, Jankis Khan. Jankis Khan, he came, he destroyed the Islamic Caliphate. Why? Because he was more, more savage than us, the Arab. So when he attacked us, we were comfortable, we are wealthy. We have palaces, we have a lot of slaves. We eat uh, uh, a shish kebab uh, every day. And you know, it's, uh, life is fun. So when the savage came, Jankis Khan and his army, those people they take a shower with the blood of the horse they drink from the blood of their horse and then now actually in those countries in Mongolia they drink blood of a horse it's like a meal for them so when a savage came he's more savage than the savage the savage conquer the previous savage that is history and Muhammad was able to conquer because he was a savage person. Not because the Muslim, he says, Muhammad, he was a merciful for mankind. What merciful? What is his mercy? You know, same as the Roman. The Roman, when they were savage, they were victorious. The more they became spoiled and not into, uh, you know, they were like losing ground, losing ground until Rome disappeared. You own the slaves? Why somebody told you I was born 2,000 years ago? We are taking, talking about Middle Eastern. Actually, in the Middle East, some countries, until now, they have slaves, yes. Until now. <clears throat> and it's, you know, the Bible is speaking clearly. Jesus says the one who live by the sword, he die by the sword. Because you, you will be savage. Well, savage will come to you. Will fight you. You are not the only savage in this earth. There is no such a story. Muslims they fabricate stories about garbage, and you know this is fabrication. The one who tell you the story, tell him, okay, show me the story. You know? All those stories is a fabrication. Now, do we have any Muslim here? <clears throat> Any Muslim want to say anything? Just a question. Uh, I know it's off the topic. I read one. Muhammad said difference between construction, construction the Kaaba and Solomon Temple was forty years. Well, there is tons of stories, you know. I mean, Muhammad, for some reason, he is stuck with numbers like 40 years, 70, 72, you know. 
and I find that those numbers are coming from the Old Testament and from the from the Bible so how many days Jesus he fasted guys how many days Jesus fasted 40 days right and then you will find Muhammad he stuck with number 40 Jesus says if your brother uh, you know come like uh, he did something bad to you forgive him how many times 70 times Muhammad is stuck with 70 all the story of Muhammad is a copy from somewhere and Muhammad he copies tons of, of words even from Jesus mouth himself directly I will show you an exa example Can you tell me what do you think? I'm not going to make any comment. Do this remind you of anything? Do this remind you of anything? Muhammad is using, he's just changing a little bit in the numbers, you know. He is using the same example of Jesus teaching, etc. You know, so this is how Muhammad work. All his story is taken from somebody. What about this? What do you think? Do you see it? Actually, once uh, I have a shake, he says, ha, 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 ha. Uh, Okay, Christian Prince, I have something you cannot answer. I said, what? He said, uh, I, I, it found in science that Mr. Seed is not the smallest. So this is a scientific uh, mistake. He said, are you sure? And you know, when Christian Prince, he said, are you sure? That's mean there's a, there's a disaster will happen. The Abdul, he said, I'm very sure. He's a sheikh, you know. He said, are you sure? I'm very sure. Are you sure? He said, yeah, I'm very sure. So, okay, so why Muhammad Allah, he used it. Here we go. You know, the second I showed you them in the, in the Quran, he said, at that time, it. I mean, he start like now to try to like uh, because he want to cover. Like he was saying, this, this is stupid. This is an error. This is a mistake. This is a you know as usual. You know. All right. So, Muhammad. There is actually there's a book. It's called Qis uh, Wanabi, uh, which means. Uh, a priest and a prophet. Uh, there is a good study in that book about Muhammad is stealing from the Bible. Tons of examples. <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim? Six hundred sixty-three watching. Only four hundred sixty-eight like it. Hmm. Do we have any Muslim want to say something? <laughs> Everything in the Quran is coming from somewhere. Everything. And if there is any Muslim want to say this is not true, eh, get me busted. Feel free. Hmm? 
uh, make your next book of all 100 million people, the Muslims. Uh, you see, like uh, speaking about how many people get killed, this is a work of a historian. Historian who have a very massive knowledge of history. I have a, I have a, a good knowledge in the religion of Islam, not really, uh, uh, because in order to prove how many people get killed, this is not an Islamic book. Muslim will not say really how many people they killed. So you have to trace numbers in different books. So that is a work of a historian. For me, I have all the Islamic, uh, you know, library in my head. Uh, but uh, numbers, uh, and if you make a study, you better make it accurate. Otherwise, you know, you will lose the trust of people. Um, I do not need to try to start Arabic uh, teaching again because those videos actually they are enough to teach you. That's why we leave them there out for free. Practice them, you know. Practice them. We teach you from the alphabet how to make words, how to connect them. No, there's no need. I have no time to do all those things. Well, I mean, uh, what do you think about uh, preacher getting jailed? Why Christian in, in Canada don't support them? What about you make a strike? Right straight. Well, where is the Christians in Canada? There's millions. They are the majority. So one of, our, one of us, something happened to him, and the rest, they don't care. The government, they don't care. The government, they care only for those who they fear them. The Prime Minister of Canada, he just have a meeting with the Muslims asking them to vote for him. Huh. You know, why he meet with them? Because he know they are organized and they do things together. Christians, they don't. Right? So when you, uh, when when something happened, like now, the you know, the Muslims, they flag my video. Uh, many of you send the email and YouTube took the, the flag off. Yeah. Organized work. You see, when we are united, we are strong. When we are divided, we are weak. This is why always, you know, in, through history, uh, uh, how we lost the Constantinia, the Constantinia, which is today is Turkey. Simply, the Christians were divided. Division is the best way to conquer. Divide and conquer. This is why, for me, I, I, I fight against division. That's all of us, we Christians. And for me, the word Christian means Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox. Whoever believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, you know, whoever believe in the crucifixion of Jesus, resurrection of Jesus, the coming back of Jesus, you know, the, the birth of Jesus, the miracle of Jesus, he is my brother in Christ. The vision bring nothing, and it's not it's not what Jesus wants, it's against the teaching of Jesus. So you claim to be Christian, but the second I say to you Catholic, you go crazy. The second I say to you Protestant, you go crazy. This is not the Christian spirit, and you have nothing to do with Christ. We call him in the Aramaic, you know. We have many words. But we, if, if, are you, if you are speaking about uh, uh, the words, it's exactly the same as in the Hebrew, because our Bible is using the Hebrew words. Elohim, Jehovah, Yahweh, etc. But the word God have many words in Arabic, like Rab, Ila, uh, which is same actually, same coming from Aramaic. All those are Aramaic words anyway. And our God, by the way, like for us as a Christians, the name of God is not the problem, because God did not even give His name to Moses. He said to him, "I am." There's no name. We don't recognize our God by His name. Even the Messiah, he says, from their fruits, you shall know them. The fruit of Christ, you know, what if today somebody came to us and say, I'm Christ. Okay, show me the fruit of Christ. From their fruits, you shall know them. Muhammad, he came, he claimed to be a prophet. Let us say Muhammad, he changed the name of his God and he called him uh, Elohim. That still will not make any difference. I will give you an example. The Jehovah's Witnesses, they have the same names we have in the Bible, correct? But they are cult. So we are not rejecting the cult of Islam because of the name of God. This is silly. This is stupid, actually. 
It's like somebody he have a donkey and he put a sign of rose rice in his donkey and he says, Hey, I have rose rice. Changing the name will not change the quality. So our rejection have nothing to do with the name. This is not the reason. It have to do with the quality and the truth. You understand me? So I'm not against the God of Islam because his name is Allah. Even even if though that Allah is a word mean uh, Allah, you know, and Al is simply uh, the word mean God, and Allah is the name of the God of Islam. His name is not Allah. His name is Allah. Allah. This is the true name of of, of the God of Islam. But you know, uh, for you, you don't know Arabic. And the Muslim, they say to you, Do you know that the Arabic Bible translation, they use the word Allah? This translation. Do you know that the Muslim Quran, they use the word Jesus in translation? This translation, there's no Jesus in the Quran. If you read the whole Quran, there's no Jesus. It's a lie. The Muslim didn't have the name of our Lord. In the whole book, they have. They have a guy, his name is Isa. It's a translation. You know what I mean? So the book of Islam, they claim that they are following the same names we have. But the fact, Muhammad, he got all the names wrong. Mary is the sister of Aaron, which is the brother of Moses. And she is the daughter of a guy, his name is Amran. Who is Amran? He is the father of Moses. <laughs> this is the chapter of Amran. So Muhammad even could not quote, I mean, how this can be from God? But yet Allah, he do not know the correct name is not to Umran, it's Umram. Which means the last letter here should be M from mountain, not N. So what happened to Allah? His ears was blocked. How God, he do not know even how to pronounce a name correctly. You see, I am not, uh, uh, English is not my first language. So it's possible for me to make a mistake to pronouncing uh, an English name or a Latin name but we are talking about God God do not know how to pronounce a name correctly so Umram became um, Imran <laughs> well how is this happening the God of Muhammad do not know uh, look Look at look at this madness. Here we go. Alif Lam Mim. You ask a Muslim, what is that? You say to you, it's a miracle. Nobody knows what it means, save Allah. Look, what the heck? Okay, I'm going to make a miracle now. F M Jim. Letters. How this is a miracle? How this is a miracle? What make it a miracle? So I will make uh, some letter button together and make a miracle. It's a miracle. If you have my books, you will see what the miracle is about. And look, from the beginning, you will see the Quran, something wrong with it. Look, Alif Lam Mim. Okay, what the heck is that? I don't know. Allah, there is no God but He. Okay, how Allah, He says, Allah, there is no God but He. Didn't He say, I? If the one is talking is Allah. And then it says, it is He who sent the book on you. Who is talking? This is a crazy. Who is the one is talking there? Uh, you ask the Muslim, they say to you, Allah. Okay, how Allah he say it is he? Hmm? Any Muslim? And look always the Muslims in their translation they try to cover the problem like look, look here it says suddenly he says our Lord let not our heart uh, uh, deviate okay w w w between two brackets they say to you they say where in the Quran says they say how Allah he says our Lord 
Where is the introduction for this? Who is the one saying that? Allah saying, Our Lord, let not our heart, etc. And then to cover the problem, the mistake in the Quran, which is stupid, they say, They say, They who? Who, who, who? Read the verses before it, read the verses after it. You don't see, the, you, don't, you don't know who is they. And you know, uh, there is a question no Muslim can answer. Where was Allah before the seventh century? Before Muhammad? W which books his name appear in? Any Muslim can tell us? Which book before the book of Muhammad mentioned the name of Allah? The book of who? Here we go, the Aramaic Bible, we have it. The Hebrew, we have it. Anything else is a translation. Okay, where is the name Allah coming from? They don't know. What Allah mean, they don't know. They don't know. What Israel mean, they don't know. Ibrahim, they don't know. Maryam, they don't know. Isa, they don't know. <laughs> and imagine, if you ask the Muslims what the word uh, Christ mean, Al-Masih, they say, because the word Masih coming from the word uh, uh, wipe, you know, like wipe something, they say one of the opinion because they are confused what the name what the name mean. But this is the major opinion. They say mostly because he have a flat feet. This is what the Messiah mean. He have a flat feet. So what does that mean when he walk walk like Charlie Chaplin? <laughs> Because Islam is a theft, so they know nothing. The Messiah, the word Messiah, according to Muslims, because the Messiah have a flat feet. Yeah, sure, we have Aramaic Bible. Yeah, you can download it online. <clears throat> you see, that there is Aramaic Bible, which is a translation for the Bible, and there's Aramaic Bible, which is written in in the because Aramaic is two languages. There is Eastern, Western. There is ancient. There is a newer. So Aramaic is not only one, you know. I mean, there is an, there's different between Aramaic. But uh, if you if you remember, there is books in the Old Testament written in Aramaic. And why? Because the the Jews themselves they were enslaved by the Aramaic people, the people who speak Aramaic, the 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 the, the Assyrian, right? And the the Messiah was speaking Aramaic too. Yeah, we call him Yeshua. Yeshua is the same you when you, you see the Arabic uh, like Yeshua because the Jews they say Yeshua, Yeshua. So the, for in the Arab, the sin turn into sin. So yes, Yeshua, Yeshua. It's the same. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. And thanks for all those who made donation today. I really appreciate your help. But anyway, you know, if you uh, if you uh, uh, if you try to study this uh, uh, this cult, you will see easy. It's a stupid cult. And look, if you read the chapters in the Quran, you will find there's no connection between verse and verse. This God, he cannot be God. He he's suffering from a flight of thought. His brain is not functioning. There's no connection between what he say. Is that true that Islam says the earth is a flat? Yes, absolutely. This is why, the, okay, ask yourself why the Muslims they pray toward Mecca. How you can pray in the direction of Mecca? The Jews they used to pray in the direction of Jerusalem, but this is when they are out of the wall of Jerusalem for them to go back. It's not really are facing the direction, nobody can face the direction of Jerusalem unless you are very close to it. Muhammad in the beginning he was a praying in the direction of Jerusalem too. But Muhammad when he make it as a enforcement to 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 pray in the direction of Jerusalem, 
obviously because of his ignorance and we can prove it easy in the Quran con confirm that the earth is a flat there's a verse actually in the Muslims they claim that this verse says that the earth is like a ball why because there's a there's an idiot who made a video says the word daha mean a ball and then the Muslims copy paste as usual you know but the fact the word well ardu ba'da dharika dahaha dahaha mean make it flat like carpet look at the translation here Tra change the translator this is Yusuf Ali let us see the different one this is why we cannot take the Muslim translation seriously look here there it says wide extent here it says spread spread the earth what spread the earth doesn't say that not really the word daha let me see if I can find the what the word daha is coming from where <clears throat> uh, trying to remember the word in Arabic which is here guys what is the word you use what is the the name of the of the the thing your mom she used in the kitchen to make pizza like when she made the da and then she want to make it like a circle what is that tool they call it You know what I'm talking about? The piece of wood which have like two handles? No, no, no. Rolling pin, maybe a rolling pin. No, yeah, we are talking about the one you you push in the top of the da after you make it. Let us see. Yeah, here we go. This one. This is what the haha is coming from. So he used that rule to make it flat the same as the bread all right this is exactly where the word the haha came in from so here when you see the, the, the translation it says he spread the earth the, the the translation is a true and false at the same time because it spread the, the earth and he made it flat not spread what spread You know what I mean? Uh, and there is many verses, you know, as an example. Uh, Allah, he made the earth as a carpet. I mean, how clear we can make it more than this. Chapter 71, verse number 19. And look at the translation. He made it wide expense for you. It doesn't say that. It says carpet. Let, let me show you. Hold on. Let us open the interpretation uh, website. So you will see how they lie in the translation. This is why I'm working in the translation for the Quran. You cannot trust their translation. Never trust. Because they knew if you translate it accurately, you will use it against them. This is the point. And actually, uh, uh, if you tr change the translator, you will find other translators getting Islam busted, even though they are Muslims. But by mistake, they did not notice that this will be a problem. You know? Okay, chapter 71, verse number 19. Okay. <clears throat> Let us go there. All right. Look, even here in the interpretation, look. Look what they are saying. Allah has made the earth a widest expense for you to lay and sleep. But isn't it this is a flat? Why you are, why you don't say it says a carpet? It literally it says the word carpet, besought. Besought anyone who speaks Arabic in you. I will do a trick hold on look what I will do I will do Google translation hold on I need to open it in uh, in Google browser or you know what let us change different translator hold on let us give us a try I'm sure we will find somebody getting them busted let us see a different one mo do the do the do the why the expense for you 
until now all of them they are wide expense for you hey, Arbery oh look this guy Dreda Dirabadi what expense to you all of them until now look ah look at this guy finally we got someone he say it as it is and God has laid the earth for you as a carpet okay ask yourself why all of them they were saying wide expense nobody saying carpet when the word in Arabic is carpet you can copy this sentence take it to Google translation which is a blind translation and you will see we translate the word besought which is the last word here as a carpet all right so the earth is a flat And there is a uh, you know uh, there's tons of verses but I wish there's a Muslim he can call us so we can like have some exciting talk <clears throat> any Muslim we like to hear you I mean you know he can prove us wrong Actually, there's many videos on the internet, by the way, by, by sheikhs. They are saying whoever believes that the earth is a flat is stupid. First, it's against Allah teaching. So they say that loudly. I mean, it's not. Uh... <coughs> and actually, uh, there is more, uh, more verses as an example. Uh, uh, if we go to the chapter of noon, noon, just to show you the the science of Islam, chapter sixty one, verse no, sixty eight. Sorry, verse number one. Noon, Allah swear by noon, and then He swear by the pen. What is noon? If we go to the interpretation, sixty eight one. This is the official government uh, website of Jordan, one by the king. Verse number one. Man. Nothing will work in this website. Look, I click. Eh, finally. <laughs> you have to click like 1,000 times. <laughs> Nothing will work in the Middle East, my friend. Welcome to the Middle East. All right. Look at this. This is how always the Muslims understand the earth and how it works. Uh, let us see if we can zoom better. Let us see. Hold on. I don't know. Can you guys read the text still? Can you still read see the text? Is it is it readable for you? All right. From his authority of Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas is the cousin of Muhammad. He said, regarding the interpretation of Allah saying noon, noon, he says Allah swear by noon, which is read very carefully, which is the wheel that carry the earth on its back while it is in the water and beneath which is the bowl and under the bowl there is a rock and under the rock there is a dust and none knows what is under the dust save Allah here the Muslims are being honest okay here our, our limit of knowledge is stopped uh, the Prophet did not tell us more so the last point we know is the dust uh, what is under the dust we do not know so the earth is in the top of a whale and the whale in the top of a bowl and the bowl <laughs> <laughs> and you know why the Muslim do not make a movie about this they make science in the Quran and you know the... will you uh, uh, okay if you are an Arab if you are an Arab it's very hard to hide the truth from you 
unless you are a person who is not really searching I mean just you take things what people say to you but if you are not an Arab that will make it very difficult for you to know the truth like if now this is not translated I'm not arguing here about the translation by the way translation here is not correct too but look what it is so if this is in Arabic and you never none of us speak Arabic how we will know this garbage how we will learn about it and this is why actually I, 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 I did not make any book in Arabic because Arab they have opportunity to read by own their own you know but none Arab they don't have the opportunity and the majority of Muslims are not Arab so look at this madness and then the name of the whale is Lewish Lewish uh, Lewish Farrakhan <laughs> and it said that the name the name of it it's Lutia and the name of the bull is Bahamut and some they say it is Telahut or Leona and the whale in the sea called Edward and it's like a small ball in a huge sea mm -hmm. now you can go and you will find some drawing in the internet about how the old days people they used to think that the earth was in the top of a turtle the earth in the top of a ball as it says here whale all of those are legions in the old days they used to explain how the earthquake happened because the ball he moved the earth he got tired from his horn from the right horn to the left horn you know so all those stories are uh, and look here look and the sea this thing is getting exciting is a Hollywood rock whereby there's 4,000 cracks and there's 4,000 cracks in our head now from this story and from each crack I mean look how they count how many cracks in the ocean actually it's not an ocean this is where the earth and, and the top of it like I mean this is in the bottom of the earth and the earth sorry 4,000 cracks and from every crack is a water spring come out from the earth look, look how stupid here the story how you say the earth is in the top of the wheel and under the earth which means under the earth there is a wheel and under the wheel there's a ball and then you say there's 4,000 cracks and the water come out of the earth you guys do you understand what I'm saying anyone notice with me how stupid this story here now don't make me don't make me draw it <laughs> okay I will draw it but fast look listen so here we have the earth and here we have the fish the wheel okay and here we have the bull who is carrying the fish in the top of his horn all right now under the bowl there is a dust and then there's four thousand cracks four thousand cracks and then it says there and from each crack the water come from the earth but the cracks are not connected to the earth they are connected to the water which is under the bowl and actually the water is not here the ball there's, there's no water in the ball the ball in the top of him there's an ocean and this is where the the wheel is crazy I mean what you can do All right <laughs> science and you have to believe now you know the Muslims like they have tons of uh, I have I have my all my books is about uh, Quran and science like especially Quran and science in depth you will see as an example the Muslim they say a brother do you know that the Quran speak about uh, uh, the atmosphere Quran speak about atmosphere are you sure yeah brother Quran speak about atmosphere let me let me find you Uh, the website there's a, they have endless numbers of uh, what it's called miracles let us see
look at this website and I made tons of videos about those stories so you can watch them uh, the Quran is the book of Islam contains scientific knowledge that could not have been in 1400 years ago for sure the whole knows the way the story uh, it's range from basic uh, arithmetic and the most advanced topic that's in the Quran okay true story and then you go here the speed of light in the Quran the terminal uh, etc in the Quran mass extension uh, extension uh, in, in the Quran a uh, paper money is in the Quran white hair in the Quran rupture in the Quran uh, raptors are in the Quran meteors in the Quran all of those all of those in the Quran and then the study the, the second you start studying carefully you will see that everything there is a stupid and here we go in the front of you what about we make a challenge and I will open my Skype and who is the Muslim when I go give me a call and he chose a miracle of his choice from those and my duty to get it busted what do you think guys <clears throat> Even though my voice is tired, but it's okay. Anyone? Who is a Muslim wanna give it a try? <clears throat> My Skype is open now. <clears throat> Anyone? You choose. You choose any of those. What it's called miracles. And my job is to get it busted with no mercy. With no mercy. Any Muslim? Look how many. You choose. Look! 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 All of those in the Quran. I everything. Anything in the Quran. Qasim, don't send me a video, my friend. If you want, to, you know, choose one. Sister of Aaron, Christian Prince refuted. Eh, we laugh. You will say to me, the prophet, he said that they used to call them by the good ones of their ancestor. That's stupid statement. We can get it busted easy. Because Mary is the daughter of Amran. Moses is the son of Amran. You tell me how it happened that Mary is the sister of Aaron daughter of Amran and Moses is a son of Amran <laughs> my friend you see you post for me videos those are videos made by kids what about you make your scholar call me and get me busted live or you call me and get me busted tell me what it says in this video don't be a coward tell me what it says in the video. And, and my duty is to show you that this is stupid you Muslims are desperately trying to refute me but you cannot that's why I'm here all every day and nobody can refute me try they make videos they refute me debating themselves christian prince get busted okay debate yourself and win the hero of you is the one who called me it's recorded it's for your benefit you can download the video after we finish you post it in your channel and show every muslims how christian prince you know nothing all right guys you are not calling because you know you are not qualified and you cannot otherwise trust me if I am a person who know nothing they will be fighting over me Shabir Ali want to debate the Christians every day except me don't even get to close what is name the guy who he, he challenged he made a challenge David uh, would I challenge you um, while Ibrahim okay so I said hey well I'm, I'm not busy David Wood is busy he said I'm willing to debate you too uh, yeah you know but you have to come to Hong Kong <laughs> how come in the case of David Wood you don't you, you, you don't care if you debate him in sky but in my case I have to come to Hong Kong same as Mimi Hijab, same as the other guys I'm seeing. I mean, all of them, kids. <clears throat> so who is the Muslim want to show me any of those miracles to be truth? All those miracles are big, fat lies. And this is additional proof that Islam is a lie. Because if Islam is not a lie, why you lie to prove Islam to us? Correct, guys? If Islam is a true, 
how the followers of Islam they lie to make Islam look good a Christian who fabricate and lie to make somebody believe in Jesus he is no Christian he is satanic you cannot make a person believe in Jesus by lying to him because he believed in your lie he did not believe in Jesus in Islam it's okay the religion of all of it, it even Muhammad he says you can lie in three cases your wife your, your your friends your wife and your your family who's left sorry your enemy who's left my friends people around me my family is my wife okay and the enemy okay thank you very much who left so who is the Muslim I choose for us any of those miracles it's called miracles all of those are in the Quran look at this even the tank is in the Quran do you see the tank even the tank is in the Quran you believe it mosquito is in the Quran I think this is a new one I did not see it before did we see it before and look this me this mosquito this mosquito uh, uh, once I was in, in Asia and I like I have I, I met with some ladies from the church actually the women who invite me to do in uh, uh, like my seminar so I know I know the names of the first the second the third I mean it's a group so I was introducing to the other one the names of those ladies so I was saying miss uh, etc miss etc and then suddenly a mosquito stopped in my hand and I hit it I said mosquito <laughs> so here the mosquito of the Muhammadan look how long the nose of it look how long the nose that explained the lies the nose of the mosquito is so long did you notice brother how long the, the nose look 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 who is the muslim when asked me about the mosquito anything anything you want which one or if it is a lie They don't there. Look, even atmosphere pressure, atmosphere pressure in the Quran. I did not see that one. I don't think I don't remember. I saw this one. Atmosphere pressure in the Quran. Sonic weapons. Sonic weapon in the Quran. Straight a starlight. Petra. Uh, mass. Uh, string theory. A Musa's a human embryo speed of light <laughs> and not a single one of them is true who is the hero want to prove me wrong who is a Muslim hero want to prove me wrong maybe 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 we will talk to you nicely you are welcome to talk to me and prove me wrong Pakistan. Yeah, by the way, we as Arab, we don't we don't have letter P. So when we read in, in Arabic, we don't say Pakistan, we say Pakistan. So some of you might say, this guy don't even know how to say Pakistan. We don't have P in Arabic. And we don't call it Pakistan. It is Pakistan. This is how, and even, even the Muslim themselves, they call it Pakistan. So you might think you are the one who supposedly have the correct name. No, you don't. Like, uh, if we ask you about like any uh, uh, Iraq, you say Iraq. There's nothing it's called Iraq. It's the Iraq. But because you don't have equal letters to the Arabic, you think, okay, this is the name. So if I call it Iraq, you say, what is guys saying? There's nothing it's called Saudi Arabia. What's Saudi Arabia? The name is written. Uh, it's pronounced wrong. Uh, Yeah, there's many uh, letters we don't you know and we don't have there's many letters you don't have in your language and there's letters we don't have in Arabic
العربية السعودية العربية السعودية أو المملكة العربية السعودية مملكة is the kingdom عربية عرب السعودية سعودية not سعودية even the the name the letters orders in English is wrong But like in English, in English you say Jordan. There is nothing called Jordan. It is Al Urdun. There is no letter G exist in the name. Al Urdun. So, do we have any Muslim want to say something? <clears throat> Look, even the North is there. Dark energy, soul expansion. And what do you want more? I mean, that's it. The Quran, you find anything. Subduction. Look at this. Rocks, cracks in the Quran. <laughs> uh, Pompeii, what is that? Frozen and the final act. Pompeii in the Quran. <clears throat> Anyone? Like as an example, you, there are some letters you cannot even pronounce. As as an example, da. It's very hard for a foreign person to pronounce that letter. So you say sa there's no it's not sa it's so so da ah you know so a person who is a german you say to him say bahra he, he cannot say bahra even if you learn arabic he say bahra but bahra mean he do poo poo bahra mean a lake so look at the difference between lake and poo poo or he's doing poo poo it's an action so like a German guy will say to you, how I can go, supposed to he learn Arabic, how I can go to Bakhra, which means uh, how I'm going to do Pupu. But in fact, he's asking you how I can go to the lake. You know, because simply the letter he, he cannot pronounce it. Do we have any Abdul? And by the way, this is why the Quran uh, the Quran was not like this. I mean, the Quran was written without those dots and those things. So, how you can understand what what the word is there? It's impossible because there's many possibility. I will give an example, just from the what is in front of us. Look as an example uh, as as uh, to this word. Let us highlight this word here, khuliqa. This word, I'm putting underneath of the word. I will type the word in the side without any, we call it Tashkir in Arabic, which means evolves and etc. Let us type it there. I will not, but the problem is how we can take the dots off. The only one, the only way I think, if we write it by pen, not by the keyboard, the keyboard will add the dots automatically. So let us use the pen. So this is the word. And now we will write it here. Okay. If I, I if I add two dots here, that can make it either shaving uh, 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 or it can make it earring halak, or it can make it uh, halak, which means your throat choose one the same word we did not change anything do you see the difference halak, which shave or halak, which is earring or halak which is a throat 
how we will know which one is meant now uh, we add a dot as in the Quran the Quran now it says uh, exactly the same but in the Quran here there's a there's a little move here which is called Dhamma so now that will make it Khuliqa or Khalaqa so Khuliqa it's meaning created Khalaqa meaning uh, 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 um, let us say how to explain to you Khuliqa it's he created Khalaqa uh, we are talking about Allah he created something so it's different meaning so just by adding little little movement things have changed okay what if we about we we took off uh, the dots again just to show you how many possibility can be i'm trying to take the dots okay here we go all right okay now I will I will I will uh, show you more possibility. If I if I add a, a, a dot here and a dot here, half behind, half in in my back, you know, or it can be uh, by adding a shadda, I can change it like a, a somebody half. Like somebody in her rate, a caliphate, caliphate. You see how many meaning? So it's just one word. So the Quran was without dots. So every word have many possibility of meaning, and there's no way to know. No way to know. So after many years of Muhammad. A person who is not even an Arab, he's a smart. He said, what the heck with this language? We have to add things so we can make it clear. <laughs> and he add those dots and etc. So the Arabic can be clear. Otherwise, it's very confusing. Hmm? So do we have any uh, Muslim want to say something? They don't read it usually. Uh, I mean, uh, this is why there's many reading for the Quran. As an example, if you go to chapter one, if we go to chapter one in the Quran, <laughs> in one Quran it says surat. As you see, this Quran here it says surat. In the Moroccan Quran it says zurat. So what's the difference between zurat and surat? Zurat in Arabic mean Farting. And you can ask any Arab. We are not making things up. Zurat. What is the difference between the word in the top and the word underneath? Just one dot. And by the way, it's in the Quran today. It is Zurat. You see, this is the... Uh, 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 there is uh, by by Warish by Hafs. This is Hafs. The one is the Durat by by, by Warish. So Warish, he don't say Surat. He Surat. He said Durat. Durat mean farting. So give us the straight farting. It's appeared twice here. The word Durat or Surat appeared twice here and here. So in verse number six, it says, guide us to the straight fort. In this reading, it says, guide us to a, a, a straight fort. Uh, by the way, the word Surat is not Arabic too. So the Muslim are confused about their meaning. So everyone have his own uh, interpretation. So some they say Surat is a Persian word mean bridge. Uh, it, uh, uh, it like uh, a carpet. It, I mean, it's uh, it's many, many, many because this is not an Arabic word. So, sirat or durat, Allah knows best. <laughs> you know, if you speak Arabic, by the way, this is going to be fun because this is a ton, tons of crazy stuff. But usually, I don't talk about Arabic because what the point? There's nobody speak Arabic here. 
the Muslim they say you the, the Quran Arabic is amazing it's the most stupid city uh, Arabic ever you can you can imagine and look number one verse in the Quran have a grammatical error there's nothing in Arabic it's called bism it is bism here it says bism there's nothing in Arabic it's called bism let me show you hold on I will open different page and I will put them next to each other <clears throat> see if we can do that okay I don't know let me know if you if uh, if it's going to be clear for you I'm not sure okay okay we search for the word bism look and now I think we need to take a snapshot for this one first let us take a snapshot because I think we'll not be able to put them together in one and this let us see hold on maybe if we do this uh, like this uh, like that like this uh, we have to extend I think okay hold on all right is it still clear for you or it became so small now okay look this is the correct way to write the word bism do you see it this is the wrong one in the same Quran anyone notice what the different the different is here this one let us make it in different color this one have an alif alif is equal to a letter a this one does not have it you ask the Muslims what happened they say to you because the ism in the beginning of the Quran is hard to read so we took the letter alif off for easier reading isn't it the Muslim they're saying not in single letter in the Quran is it changed and how you change Arabic this is Arabic how you change the language just for reading yes just for reading and why Allah he chose a word in the beginning of the Quran which is hard to read can't Allah come with his own word no he cannot so BSM become BISM but in Arabic there's nothing it's called BISM zero And as you see, the same word repeated how many times? Look, here 56, 74, 56, 96, 52, uh, 69, 52, uh, 96, number one. All of them, they are coming back. Bism. Here, it's coming Bism. Which is obviously a stupid mistake. Now. So, the, what the Muslims they do in order just to make the Quran easier to read. They broke the Arabic. They broke the Arabic. The Muslim they say the Quran Arabic is the best, but the fact it's a broken Arabic. It's like a guy, you know, like you know, remind me of myself when I start learning Arabic, uh, English. I went to a chat room and I say hello guys, and they bounce me. You know, they can bounce you off the chat room. They kick me out and they start calling me names. And I was saying to myself, what's wrong with those people? Why they are rude to me? I didn't say anything. I just say hello guys. And later I learned that I was making a mistake. I was pronouncing the word guys as gays. All right. So Allah looked like his English was like mine in Arabic. I say hello guys, but the guys, uh, but I was typing hello gays. And they bounced me out of the chat room. And I was wondering, what's wrong with people? I said nothing. I did nothing yet. I did not even talk yet. I just said, type in the text, hello guys. <laughs> I mean, I want to improve my English, and then a second I enter, I say, I said, there is something wrong in Hello Guys. It must be. <laughs> so, Hello Guys, it turned to be Hello Gays. So, 
uh, Allah, you know, he is he want to say hello guys, but he said hello gays. Hmm? No, all right. Anyway, I think we have enough for today. Did we have a good time? Guys, don't forget to download the video immediately after we finish because we are not keeping them uh, long in our video and your channel. As you see, we are target. We have a lot of enemies who don't like us to do what we do. So by your help, the videos stay there. People learn from them and the knowledge is spread. Uh, what does Quran mean, Amina? I don't know what Amina mean. What Amina? I'm not sure. You are not quoting the correct word. So I want to say thank you guys for being here. Please download the video immediately after we finish. And until we see you again, <coughs> um, I hope tomorrow. Tomorrow is Sunday. But well, why not? We'll try to go try to go online. If people miss us, I don't know if people will miss us by now until tomorrow. So until we see you soon again, may the Lord bless you. And thanks for all those who support us in every way, in every me, by uh, by kind words, by donation, by downloading the videos, by emailing YouTube when they flag my videos. I really appreciate all of you. I'm really thankful for all, uh, uh, each one of you. I feel like I have a family. And, uh, you know, God is good. Uh, the Lord always he gather uh, his children and they are uh, united with love and patient and remember uh, you know the devil will not leave you alone as long you don't leave him alone because for him as long you do good you are not leaving him alone so the second you don't you leave him alone he will leave you alone if you are a person who go get a drunk uh, do gambling, uh, uh, get, do anything you want, but leave, leave God and religion and belief and faith. Stay away from that. Devil, he will be in your side. You go, you see people making videos, getting naked in the camera. I mean, they post crazy stuff. Nobody flagged them. Nobody even complained. You know, a woman, she's showing her panty, shaking her ass. Nobody will, will flag a video like this. But our videos are a target because we are sharing the truth, and the truth will set many free. And the second you share the truth, a lot of stones will be thrown at you. And you are not better than the Lord himself, for he was crucified. So if our Lord himself was crucified, who we are to complain. Thank you. May the Lord bless you. And see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. I see you.